Since 1991, the Virtuosi Concert Series has been delighting audiences with world-class chamber music performed by some of the best musicians on the scene. On Friday, October the 13th at 7.30 at St. Andrews River Heights United Church, the Virtuosi Concert Series will be kicking off their 2023-24 season with a concert that features a cello star, both on the Canadian and worldwide scene, Canadian cellist Stefan Tetro. This is just the first of a whole series of amazing concerts that make up the 2023-24 Virtuosi season. This upcoming season features both solo artists and chamber ensembles performing music from a wide variety of forms and musicians. Here to tell us more about Virtuosi's upcoming season, I am joined by Jennifer Thiessen, who is the Artistic Director of Virtuosi Concerts. Hey, Jen, it's great to have you back Hi, here Chris. in studio. Hi, Chris. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was looking up the lineup at the lineup for this year's season, and you and the team of Virtuosi have done it again. You've picked a really interesting and varied lineup to varied lineup of performers and music. Can you talk about how this season came together and when did the team start planning it? Hmm. Well, I guess the prime planning of this season would have been around one year ago. So we, in the fall, are really looking at performers who could come for the next concert season Mm -hmm. and then by kind of over the holidays wanting to have everybody in place. So the, we, you know, we have a mixture of of pitches that we get from different artists and their agents and also people that I have my eye on Uh and, you know, have known and loved for a period of time and just think would be fantastic for the series and and kind of my wish list of people I'd like to invite. So it's a mixture of proposals from others and collaborations with other arts organizations like Prairie Debut, for example, Mm -hmm. is a, a touring series that's in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. So we yep. have, so Stefan, who's coming in October, yep. is presented alongside a Prairie Debut. And also we collaborate with the Winnipeg Symphony to present some of their artists who are coming to give concertos with the orchestra. And then we nab them to do <laughs> an intimate solo concert for our audience as well. Yeah. And so you touched on it earlier. There were some artists that were on the top of your mind that you really wanted to get in. Can you name some names? Yes. Well, the first one that comes to mind is Jonathan Adams, the baritone who's coming in March, March 2nd. Uh, Jonathan is somebody I heard on the radio. I think it was in 2020. I still lived in Montreal and CBC Radio was playing and we were all in lockdown and (laughs) in our homes. And this voice came on the radio and I thought, who is that? You know, and this is a number of years ago. So Mm -hmm. I'm just listening as a, you know, fellow musician and music lover. And it turns out it was Jonathan Adams, a baritone, who does a lot of really fascinating programming um, that incorporates their Indigenous heritage. Yes. He's and a Métis background, right? Yes, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Métis and Cree. Mm-hmm. And um, is a specialist in early music, so in historically informed performance. Um, so does programming that brings together Baroque music and traditional uh, Métis music and Indigenous songs and does this fascinating blend of programming that is kind of, yeah, like such a, a beautiful and important personal and historical story. Mm-hmm. And then also just combined with, you know, the most beautiful baritone voice you've ever heard. <laughs> it's, yeah, so Jonathan is somebody, I had hoped they could come actually last year and then just timing wise, it turns out they're this year. But yeah, they've been on my mind for a number of years. <laughs> so I'm really thrilled that that's working out this year. Mm. Uh, the breadth of performers and different styles of music is really quite broad. Uh, you have a concert inspired by dance. The new Orford Quartet is going to be pitzing their way on yes. stage. <laughs> there is a concert that fuses 17th century devotional song with indigenous music. Yes. And Jonathan, yep. uh, I think Winnipeg will have its first ever Gu Zheng recital. I mm. hope I'm saying that yes. right. Yes. Uh, can you talk about why the variety is so important to you and uh, those uh, your folks at Virtuosi? Yes, absolutely. Well, I mean, first of all, just the fact that you mentioned it's all of the folks at Virtuosi, that's really important. So we have a a really lovely team there now. So Heather Lewis is the executive director. I've been artistic director for a couple of years now, and we have like a very implicated board who are, yeah, we're, we're getting ourselves all pointed in the same direction. And mm. everyone really believes in this mandate that Virtuosi has had for a number of years to uh, bring a diverse perspective to classical programming. Mm. So the idea and the the situation is that, you know, the world is changing and classical music 
is changing and needs to um, kind of stay up to date and listen to what's happening mm-hmm. and and really represent our actual community and our actual population mm-hmm. and and not only the works that that uh, you know a classical music lover knows and loves so well, which mm-hmm. are all still there, also valuable and um, kind of you know, sonically, aesthetically, a foundation for a whole style of music and everything that's come since. Yeah. Um, but to mix that with, you know, listening, paying attention and listening to who else was making music at that time but has yeah. been lost throughout history, you know, yeah. women composers or composers of various cultures and backgrounds that didn't make it into the history books for mm. whatever reason. Um, so that kind of music, so it's really in that, you know, Western classical aesthetic but shows you know a perspective from from a variety of of people's points of view um and then also more contemporary composers from all different kinds of backgrounds and cultures so performers and composers were kind of looking for the stories that are shaping classical music now Mm. and wanting to represent um our community here in winnipeg and in manitoba as well um to feature performers and composers and instruments that um, all different people from here can relate to and recognize. Yeah. I I mean, one of the things I'm thinking about is I grew up in a time when there were three television stations and now everybody's got access. Like it's uh, the majesty of technology. We can hear Brahms, Beethoven, Haydn, you know, on a flip of a switch, but we can also hear Florence Price, you know, all these other mm-hmm. wonderful composers yeah. uh, as, as well, like right away. You know, yeah. it's, it's immediately accessible. Yeah, and I think we really, we really want and are keeping a connection to the composers that a lot of people know and love. So in this season, for example, there's Beethoven, there's Ravel, there's Saint-Saëns, there's Glazunov, there's, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of music that people will recognize, can hum the tune to, and might be their favorite piece. We do hope to to bring those pieces to life in a live performance setting as well, alongside other works that are are just as valuable, just as, you know, beautifully crafted and... Um, but that might speak to another audience, a wider audience, mm-hmm. um, and also to the classical aficionados as well. You might discover something yes. like, or, you know, be made to think of something differently, even if that's deciding, you know, really my favorite composer is Beethoven, but now I've heard Beethoven next to... Cherny or one yeah, of his other contemporaries, yeah, or someone yeah, from yeah. here. Or, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it's just like a perspective, just widening our definition of what's classical music, what's chamber music, what's concert music, mm-hmm. and who gets to talk about it, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you give us a brief rundown of the season? Uh, maybe mentioning artists and perhaps, perhaps some of the highlights that you uh, are very excited about for this year? Sure, absolutely. So we have eight concerts in total. One of them is a fundraising concert, so it's not in the subscription series. It's an extra event in December, but mm. I'll go through chronologically and just talk about each of the sure. the eight concerts. So our first one in October, on the 13th of October, is called The Voice of the Cello. And it's, as you said, it's the amazing cellist from Montreal, Stéphane Tétreau, and pianist Sandra Murray. And they are presenting, it's sort of a almost like fireworks (laughs) of beauty. I don't know how to describe it. It's going to be like um, many short pieces Mm. um, by composers who really knew the cello, who were really expressing something through the cello with kind of a special focus on French and Spanish composers. So there's, there is some Bach, but then from there he goes to Faure, uh, Boulanger, Saint-Saëns, Massenet, Casado, Granados, Glazunov, Defala. You get the picture. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. going to be really incredible, mm. gorgeous. He's a, He was a really exceptionally talented cellist from a very, very young age as a child yeah. and has now grown up and is developing like a really beautiful approach to programming and collaboration and kind of a like the fu- a full artist. You know, it's really The first time lovely. I heard him, I, I was just, wow. Like, yeah. uh, Analeka sent me one of his CDs and mm. I was just like, this guy is Unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. 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 He's really exceptional performer, kind of kind of uh, illuminated from within. Right? Yeah. He really gives off a wonderful energy. And mm-hmm. yeah, I would recommend anyone uh, to come to that. It's going to be really beautiful. 
Mm-hmm. In November, we have the New Orford String Quartet, who is comprised of um, two concert masters of the Montreal Symphony and the Toronto Symphony. So it's Andrew Wan and Jonathan Crow are the violinists. Mm-hmm. The violist is Sharon Way of Ontario, and Brian Manker, the principal cellist of the Montreal, Montreal Symphony, Symphony, is yeah. the cellist. So they're sort of an all-star quartet. They're just incredible. And they're doing a program called Pizzicato Landscapes. So they're, it's a fun program, and it sort of plays with the aesthetic texture of the string quartet. So instead of so much, you know, arco with the bow sustained density, they've chose a, chosen a whole program of pieces that highlights the kind of bell-like plucked sound of the strings. So here we get the Ravel Quartet. Ravel String Quartet, Beethoven mm-hmm. Harp Quartet, yep. and a piece by Anna Sokolovich, the Juno Award winning composer mm-hmm. from Montreal, um, and called um, Commedia dell'arte, and then also a piece by Caroline Shaw, uh, who's a wonderful Canadian, kind of minimalist inspired contemporary composer. Mm. Yes. And then in December, we have our fundraising concert. So mm-hmm. if you'd like to come to this one, it's the ticket is separate from the subscription mm-hmm. season. You can get it at the door or online on our website. This is, we're so excited about this. It's the Winnipeg Boys Choir and soprano Monica Hoosman. So it's all local artists, the wonderful Boys Choir. So this is their 99th season. Next year will be their 100th season, which is just incredible. Yeah. Um, led by Carolyn Boys and Albert Bergen and and others. They have a whole wonderful team of uh, directors for all of the different choir ages. And then we'll also have strings. So it's local string players and a pianist. So the strings will be actually Rachel Coltvit Christensen from the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, Sarah Harrington, who also plays with the symphony and the chamber orchestra, uh, Blair Burns on the cello. He does a lot of Baroque music mm-hmm. around town and... And also Andrew Bergen, the conductor, is a wonderful violinist ah. as well. So we'll be doing, and I'll be playing as I'll be playing viola as well. So, um, and Lisa Rumpel is playing mm-hmm. piano. So it's yeah. a local team. It's going to be really wonderful. The programming is led by the choir, by Carolyn and the choir. So it's there is going to be singing along with Christmas songs. There's going to be all kinds of holiday madness and also a reception afterwards so it's sort of a a holiday party and fundraiser and just celebration of the the boys choir and monica who's men as well Mm -hmm. Um, after that in january we have our second annual roots and branches mentorship concert project so this we began last year with funding actually from the manitoba arts council which allowed us to start this program which combines emerging artists from here with professional musicians to create a combined ensemble and together perform a concert. Yep. So the idea is that it's it's so valuable to an emerging artist to have the chance to perform alongside and rehearse alongside um, professional musicians. Totally. And it's hard to start getting those opportunities when you're at that phase kind of near the end of your studies. Yeah, you're starting to work professionally. Transitional phase. Transitional phase. Yeah. But so, um, but it's a wonderful opportunity both for the musicians and for the audiences to discover uh, who's up and coming in our community. Mm-hmm. So this year we have a wonderful cellist, Patricia Vanucci, uh, who's finishing up her master's at the U of M. Mm-hmm. And Cameron Dewar, the soprano who is studying in the States and is just excellent. She's singing in the Lee Kerr Opera okay. with the Manitoba Opera yeah, coming up. Yeah, they're doing in November. Yeah, 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 like she is, yeah, becoming very well known and celebrated and we're thrilled to have her. And then our mentors, we can actually just announce them now. They're not in writing anywhere yet, but it's Everett Hopfner, pianist, mm-hmm. and uh, Carrie DeWars will be playing violin. Oh. So we'll have violin, piano, cello, and soprano. So it will be all different combinations of these. And for our listeners, Carrie DeVores is the uh, violin teacher at Brandon University. Right? That's yeah, right. Yeah. And Everett was the director of the conservatory at Brandon University until just this year. And now he's steering more towards uh, perform- his, focusing on his performance career oh, wow. as well. Yeah, they're both wonderful musicians, mm. amazing mentors. It's going to be a really excellent experience for everyone, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in February, we have a collaboration with the... Um, 
Winnipeg New Music Festival, actually. So Wu Fei is coming from the States. She's a Chinese musician who lives in the States uh, and does, she plays traditional Chinese music on the Gujang. And she also composes and sings. So with the New Music Festival, she'll be playing uh, contemporary work with the orchestra. And then for us on February 1st, it is a solo recital of traditional music and her own compositions. Um, and the concert is called Moon Hunter, and I think it's going to be pretty magical. She's amazing. If you look her up online, she has a wonderful online presence. She has just what? incredible voice and instrumental skill. What is a gujing? Can you describe it's it? It's kind of, it's a stringed instrument. It has, it's a bit harp-like, I guess, and mm-hmm. it lay, lays horizontally um, and is plucked with the fingers. Ah. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's sort of a harp-like sound. Uh. Um, she can make it do so many things, <laughs> so many <laughs> more sounds than that. Um, yeah, so she does contemporary music, traditional music, and her own uh, compositions. Yeah, I was on the website. I was reading that apparently some of this program is going to be influenced by Chinese opera as well. And apparently, it's an instrument that's been around for 20, 2,500 years. Is it's, that- it's for, yeah, it's like, you know, it's an ancient, ancient it, instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's part of the classical music tradition in China. So something that we are wanting to do each year is to have at least one instrument featured that's yeah. from a classical music tradition that's not the European Western mm-hmm. um, tradition. So just to, yeah, remember like the, you know, wealth of instruments and sounds and aesthetics from around the world in, in these deep and long classical traditions. So this concert is part of that. I'm really, really excited about this one. Mm. Then in March, we have Jonathan Adams coming. Their concert is called With Sick and Famished Eyes, which is the name of one of the Purcell pieces that will be on the program. So there's British Baroque music like um, Purcell and um, uh, that sort of sound, that aesthetic, beautiful, sparse. Yeah, that bird. And then also... um, a variety of music from its 16th and century, 16th and 17th century devotional song. Mm. Some of some of the pieces Jonathan and their collaborator, collaborators are doing come from an Ursuline monastery in Quebec, which very likely had a high number of indigenous people who were who were at the monastery yeah, yeah. during the time that this music um, was transcribed. Uh, composed, written. So Jonathan is making connections between, um, yeah, kind of the European uh, tradition of sacred music that we're some we're performing in these contexts, you yeah, know, historical yeah. performance practice, and also indigenous people from that time period. Where were they? What was happening in history? What was the music they were actually participating in? Traditional indigenous music, as well as really interesting connections between groups of people um, and you know, actual indigenous authorship of some of the music that might be attributed to to European nuns and that kind of thing. It's really fascinating. Yeah, the yeah, research yeah, that they've great. done for the program is just incredible. Like it, um, They've dug, dug so deep to find these stories and then are also bringing in some of their own personal uh, perspectives. Mm. Their collaborators, I can also now announce, are... Um, the viola de gamba player Felix Deek from Toronto and harpsichordist and organist Jory Vinicourt from France. So they'll be coming in for this nice. show. So it's going to be a really amazing team. Mm. What's next? Next is April 7th. We have Cafe Music by a trio of professors from the Des Hotel Faculty of Music. So they're now called the Borealis Piano Trio. Mm-hmm. Um, it is Mina Rose Chung on cello, Judy Kaler Siebert on piano, and Oleg Poganovsky on violin. And they have an incredible trio, and they've been doing research on this program for actually a number of years. So they've taken music by um, um, Paul Schoenfield, Florence Price, Alexander Rosenblatt, and Christos Hatzis, and made a number of connections between influences these composers used from tango um, and various other American pop music and 
dance music from the, kind of the early to mid 20th century. Wow. Yeah, so it's tango and I don't even know the names of all of the forms, but there are, there are so many influences. If yeah. you think of like, um, yeah. Samba probably or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. different rag, kind of. Ragtime, actually. Yes, yeah, yeah. ragtime and some various different um, Jewish traditions, different kind of music from some of the composers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, backgrounds. Christos Hatzis is a Greek Canadian composer, of course. Mm-hmm. So his piece deals with um, his own tradition of music and also tango, a relationship with tango, and uh, and that connects really directly to Paul Schoenfield's piece, which is called Cafe Music. <laughs> so they've done so much research, and they just they're really incredible performers in the, in a kind of really electric virtuosic style. I think it's going to be really, really exciting and a fun way to show um, these incredible performers that we have right here in Winnipeg. Absolutely. And last but not least. And last but not least, we have Claire Huanchi, the incredible pianist. She is also performing a concerto with the Winnipeg Symphony, and then she will be doing a solo recital um, for Virtuosi on Sunday, May 12th. So she's doing a program of romantic fantasies so it's um she is still developing it it will be really specifically for our audience we're in discussions about which pieces she'll choose that kind Mm. of thing but it's it's uh yeah it's there will be a lot of favorites in there i think people can come there will be some rachmaninoff there will be some schubert some chopin yeah Yeah. yeah. so it's it's really going to be she'll also play a clara schumann um piece as well so it's going to be really yeah composers mm. people know and love yeah, yeah. the piano it's going to be at the mural richardson auditorium on that gorgeous piano yeah, yeah, the so Busendorf, yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and, and for our listeners yeah uh, she's uh she won the geisha and uh, uh piano competition and i've seen videos of her, of her on youtube she is something to she's behold something, yeah, yeah really yeah. gorgeous player so yeah. we're, we're we're really thrilled to close mm. the season with her Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and at the beginning of uh, every Virtuosi concert, you're always spotlighting the Young Artist Program uh, participants. Uh, for you as artistic director, what's the most rewarding thing about seeing these young musicians perform and compete to perform? Yes. Well, right from the audition process, it's I find it very moving to hear the audition recordings, the work that goes in, the amount of practice time, you know, as a musician myself, knowing the hours alone in a room that go yeah. into being able to play uh, a piece, like the kinds of pieces they're presenting, knowing these young people are dedicating this time and energy to developing these skills, learning this repertoire. I find it very moving. Mm. And then to be able to present um, present them in a concert setting in these professional venues um, for, you know, ticket paying audiences right before, you know, very well-known professional performer it's it's really fun to offer that opportunity to them yeah and I find their energy is really there's a lot of joy there you know like they're I think they're often very thrilled to be there and we're just thrilled to have them Mm. so yeah and the audiences we always do a very short interview with them at the beginning of the concert as well so people can get to know them a little bit and yeah it's it's really a I would say joyful experience. Yeah, I I really enjoy this aspect. Mm-hmm. This is a long running program that Virtuosi has been yeah. uh, presenting. And again, going so. the words mandate of just uh, supporting up and coming talent. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, the concerts uh, either take place at St. Andrews River Heights United Church or the Muriel Richardson Auditorium at the Winnipeg Art Gallery this year. Uh, with the exception of the fundraiser, which takes place at Westworth United Church, uh, where can people go to uh, find out more details, subscribe, and get tickets? Yes, you can go to our website. It is always the best place to get the most up-to-date information, virtuosiconcerts.ca. Um, all tickets are available there. Students also can get $10 tickets at the door for any concert. Oh, wow. And we have a number of um, different options this year. We're really working on uh, making sure our concerts are accessible to anyone who would want to come. So we still have our regular pricing model but as what we also have um, pay it forward tickets so people can buy an extra ticket and kind of put it in the pool okay. and they're up for grabs. So, you know, if if price is ever in the way, people can just contact us uh, via the website or email or phone and just say, 
you know, I'm interested in a pay it forward ticket. And that's another option for how to come. Yeah. And then student pricing, $10 is, you know, pretty doable, still something, but it's doable. So we, yeah, we want to open the doors to as many students as possible. Mm. Uh, Yes. Uh, Jen, this has been great. The upcoming season sounds amazing uh, again. Uh, it is going to be really, really something this year. Uh, thanks for taking the time to stop by our Classic 107 studio and talk to me today. Thanks, Chris. Great. It's a pleasure. Thanks.